The burden of proof Latin, onus probandi, shortened from onus probandi incumbit a qui dissit, non a qui negit is the obligation on a party in a dispute to provide sufficient warrant for their position. <laughs> Holder of the burden When two parties are in a discussion and one makes a claim that the other disputes, the one who makes the claim typically has a burden of proof to justify or substantiate that claim especially when it challenges a perceived status quo. This is also stated in Hitchens's Razor. Carl Sagan proposed a related criterion, the Sagan standard. Extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence. While certain kinds of arguments, such as logical syllogisms, require mathematical or strictly logical proofs, the standard for evidence to meet the burden of proof is usually determined by context and community standards and conventions. Philosophical debate can devolve into arguing about who has the burden of proof about a particular claim. This has been described as burden tennis or the onus game. Topic. Shifting the burden of proof One way in which one would attempt to shift the burden of proof is by committing a logical fallacy known as the argument from ignorance. It occurs when either a proposition is assumed to be true because it has not yet been proved false or a proposition is assumed to be false because it has not yet been proved true. Topic. Proving a negative A negative claim is a colloquialism for an affirmative claim that asserts the non-existence or exclusion of something. Saying, you cannot prove a negative, has been called pseudologic because there are many proofs that substantiate negative claims in mathematics, science, and economics including Arrow's impossibility theorem. However, the argument is that it takes only a single example to demonstrate a positive assertion. There is a chair in this room, requires pointing to a single chair, while the inability to give examples demonstrates that the speaker has not yet found or noticed examples rather than demonstrates that no examples exist. The negative claim that a species is extinct may be disproved by a single surviving example or proven with omniscience. The argument from ignorance is a logical fallacy. There can be multiple claims within a debate. Nevertheless, it has been said whoever makes a claim carries the burden of proof regardless of positive or negative content in the claim. A negative claim may or may not exist as a counterpoint to a previous claim. A proof of impossibility or an evidence of absence argument are typical methods to fulfill the burden of proof for a negative claim. Topic. Application Topic. In public discourse Burden of proof is also an important concept in the public arena of ideas. Once participants in discourse establish common assumptions, the mechanism of burden of proof helps to ensure that all parties contribute productively, using relevant arguments. In law The legal burden of proof Latin, onus probandi, is the obligation of a party in a trial to produce the evidence that will prove the claims they have made against the other party. In a legal dispute, one party is initially presumed to be correct and gets the benefit of the doubt, while the other side bears the burden of proof. When a party bearing the burden of proof meets their burden, the burden of proof switches to the other side. Burdens may be of different kinds for each party, in different phases of litigation. The burden of production is a minimal burden to produce at least enough evidence for the trier of fact to consider a disputed claim. After litigants have met the burden of production and their claim is being considered by a trier of fact, they have the burden of persuasion, that enough evidence has been presented to persuade the trier of fact that the side is correct. 
There are different standards of persuasiveness ranging from a preponderance of the evidence, where there is just enough evidence to tip the balance, to proof beyond a reasonable doubt. As in United States criminal courts, the burden of proof is usually on the person who brings a claim in a dispute. It is often associated with the Latin maxim semper necessitas probandi incumbit a qui agit, a translation of which in this context is, the necessity of proof always lies with the person who lays charges. The party that does not carry the burden of proof carries the benefit of assumption of being correct, they are presumed to be correct, until the burden shifts after presentation of evidence by the party bringing the action. An example is in an American criminal case, where there is a presumption of innocence by the defendant. Fulfilling the burden of proof effectively captures the benefit of assumption, passing the burden of proof off to another party. Topic. In statistics In inferential statistics, the null hypothesis is a general statement or default position that there is no relationship between two measured phenomena, or no association among groups. Rejecting or disproving the null hypothesis—and thus concluding that there are grounds for believing that there is a relationship between two phenomena e.g. that a potential treatment has a measurable effect— is a central task in the modern practice of science. The field of statistics gives precise criteria for rejecting a null hypothesis. The null hypothesis is generally assumed to be true until evidence indicates otherwise. In statistics, it is often denoted H0, read H0, H null, HO, or H0. The concept of a null hypothesis is used differently in two approaches to statistical inference. In the significance testing approach of Ronald Fisher, a null hypothesis is rejected if the observed data are significantly unlikely to have occurred if the null hypothesis were true. In this case the null hypothesis is rejected and an alternative hypothesis is accepted in its place. If the data are consistent with the null hypothesis, then the null hypothesis is not rejected. In neither case is the null hypothesis or its alternative proven. The null hypothesis is tested with data and a decision is made based on how likely or unlikely the data are. This is analogous to the legal principle of presumption of innocence, in which a suspect or defendant is assumed to be innocent, null is not rejected until proven guilty, null is rejected beyond a reasonable doubt to a statistically significant degree. In the hypothesis testing approach of Jersey Neyman and Egon Pearson, a null hypothesis is contrasted with an alternative hypothesis and the two hypotheses are distinguished on the basis of data, with certain error rates. Proponents of each approach criticize the other approach. Nowadays, though, a hybrid approach is widely practiced and presented in textbooks. The hybrid is in turn criticized as incorrect and incoherent, for details, see statistical hypothesis testing. Statistical inference can be done without a null hypothesis, by specifying a statistical model corresponding to each candidate hypothesis and using model selection techniques to choose the most appropriate model. The most common selection techniques are based on either a Kike information criterion or Bayes factor. Topic. Example. Internet personality Matt Dillahunty gives the example of a large jar full of gumballs to illustrate the burden of proof. The number of whole gumballs in the jar is either even or odd, but the degree of personal acceptance or rejection of claims about that characteristic may vary. We can choose to consider two claims about the situation, given as the number of gumballs is even. The number of gumballs is odd, either claim could be explored separately, however, both claims tautologically take bearing on the same question. Odd in this case means, not even, and could be described as a negative claim. Before we have any information about the number of gumballs, we have no means of checking either of the two claims. When we have no evidence to resolve the proposition, we may suspend judgment. From a cognitive sense, when no personal preference toward opposing claims exists, one may be either skeptical about both claims or ambivalent about both claims. If there is a dispute, the burden of proof falls onto the challenger of the status quo from the perspective of any given social narrative. 
If there is no agreeable and adequate proof of evidence to support a claim, the claim is considered an argument from ignorance. See also <laughs>